I'm Rahman Johnson. Welcome. We are here at the Masjid Al Salam in Jacksonville, Florida, with uh, Brother Umar Abdullah Johnson. He is one of the top child psychologists in the country from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He'll be speaking today, giving us some insight on what happens in child psychology and why it's so important to the African American community as a whole. As many of Frederick Douglass's contemporaries were the grandfathers of Pan-Africanism. You have Martin Delaney, uh, who, along with Frederick Douglass, co-edited the North Star newspaper. Uh, but of course, they fell out, so Frederick Douglass changed the name to the Frederick mm -hmm. Douglass paper, and Martin Delaney went back to um, editing his own paper, which was called The Mystery. Okay, he was a close friend with Frederick Douglass, then they became rivals, as you know. Uh, Bishop Henry McNeil Turner, mm -hmm. uh, who I believe was from uh, Georgia or South Carolina, uh, he was also a contemporary of Frederick Douglass. You know, he was the first black man to say that God was black, Pan-Africanist. Uh, you also have Bishop Henry McNeil Turner, who actually escaped from slavery two counties over from where Frederick Douglass escaped from. Bishop Henry McNeil Turner was the first black minister to give a speech on the floor of the United States Congress. And it was Bishop, H excuse me, and it was, uh, I'm confusing him, Henry Holland Garnett. It was Henry Holland Garnett who was the first black minister to give a speech on the floor of the United States Congress. And it was Henry Holland Garnett who escaped from, uh, escaped from slavery to freedom two counties over from where Douglas were. And it was Douglas and Garnett who faced off behind a closed door debate that took place at one of the national Negro conventions when they were deciding as to whether enslaved Africans should fight for the right to be free. Not through the Civil War, but through slave revolt okay. or whether they should wait and use moral persuasion. And Frederick Douglass won over Henry Holland Garnett in that debate by one or two votes. Had Henry Holland Garnett won that debate, slaves would have been influenced by the leaders of the race during slavery to rise up and strike for their own freedom and not wait for the Civil War. We don't know Henry Holland Garnett uh, because he was a Pan-Africanist, so he's hidden. Nobody knows him. Uh, Bishop Henry McNeil Turner, we don't know him. He's hidden because he was a Pan-Africanist. When you study our history in this country, you'll find that a lot of the great Pan-Africanists, Delaney, Edward Wilmot Blyden, who did work with Frederick Douglass, but yeah. ultimately relocated to Africa okay. and became Secretary of State of Liberia. You don't hear about them in history, but they were right there with Douglass. They were responsible for organizing blacks to participate in the Civil War. They were responsible for fighting against slavery. They were responsible for building some of black America's first institutions, but we don't know them because they advocate what a lot of Europeans would consider one of the most dangerous forms of uh, black revolutionary behavior, and that is Pan-Africanism, the linking up of black people all over the world with an effort towards building their own future. What is it that's making them want to medicate our kids so that, because quite often I think if we take time to understand them and, and, and talk to them and be with them, they will not need medication. They don't, they, mm -hmm. it's really not a behavior problem, it's just no one's paying attention to them. So if a parent says, you know, I, I can't do this and, and they want to, to medicate their child, how can mm -hmm. we go and say, well, here's, uh, what can we do to fight that? Because quite mm -hmm. often, if you don't, then you got court systems saying that, you're not doing the right thing by, by your child. So what mm -hmm. can we do to fight that so we don't end up with a bunch of kids who are zombies or addicted to these kind of, kinds mm -hmm. of medications? Well, the movement that drug black boys is based on social control. It's about maintaining the American social order. The decision was made to start drugging children in public school the same time the decision was made to start drugging black people through illegal, illicit drugs. Mm -hmm. Ritalin came into the black community the very same year that crack did. They would give crack to the adults and they would give baby crack in the form of Ritalin to the children. If you wouldn't put your child on illegal street drugs, then they shouldn't be on psychiatric drugs mm -hmm. because they're the same things. They are exactly the same thing. In fact, the Drug Enforcement Agency classifies Ritalin as a Schedule II drug, which means it's just as addictive as crack. Ritalin is pharmacologically the exact same thing as the illegal drug speed. If they catch you with speed on the corner, you go to jail for five years, but they could give it to your five-year-old year, five year son. Nobody faces a consequence for that. It's about social control. Why are the teachers pushing it? The teachers are pushing it many a time because they could care less about the child. All they want is an easier, smoother, Just quieter school Dumps them up, sits them in the corner. So my day can be easier. Yeah, yeah. You feel? Yeah, yeah. And most of the boys who are being put on psychotropic drugs are being put on solely off of the constant complaints of the classroom teacher. Period. 
who are not trained as psychiatrists or psychologists. But the power of the drug companies is behind this whole movement. See, the drug companies who make about $45 billion a year off these drugs, they feed information and money to the American Psychological, American Psychiatric Association. They, in turn, pay for expensive propaganda campaigns. So now you have teachers who go to teacher conferences who are being told that we have drugs to make your classroom children calm down. We have drugs to reduce the hyperactivity. So teachers are saying, wow, I don't need to try to do anything anymore. All I have to do is give them a drug and my problem is solved. And again, you have to go back to the fact that you're dealing with teachers who don't care about the children anyway. Now, if I care about my children, why do I want them on a drug that's going to kill his brain cells, mess with his heart, liver, and kidney that can lead to uh, schizophrenia, yeah. diabetes, yeah. epilepsy? Why do I want my child, my classroom student on a drug that can lead to premature ejaculation? He's not even old enough to have sex, but it can start affecting his ability to reproduce and have children when he's old enough to do that. Why would I want that for any child? I wouldn't want it for my own child, but I don't mind giving it to them because they're black. See, the white teacher is not a natural stakeholder in the success of a black boy. Whether he becomes a success or not, it does not affect the suburbs. And in my opinion, I don't think anybody who's not a natural stakeholder in the life of a child should be teaching that child. A good educator is like a good therapist. When I sit down with a child, it don't matter what I know, how many degrees I got, how much experience I've had. My ability to connect with that child and build a rapport yeah, yeah. is going to be the number one issue that determines whether or not I can move them from their depression, move them from their anxiety, move them from their sadness. It's the same thing with a classroom teacher. You have to connect with the kids. But as Dr. Jawanza Kanjufu said last weekend, okay, we have instructors who teach a skill but don't teach kids. And they have no idea how to communicate with no the public. And could to. care less yeah, because yeah. the public school is set up in such a way that teachers get permanent tenure after three years. Yeah, yeah. Even if you're a poor teacher, you will have your job for the rest of your life yeah. until you're ready to walk away from it as long as you've been on a job three years. And the union will even fight for you even if and you're a bad teacher. Even if you're a bad teacher. Yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. So what is making teachers properly teach black children? Nothing and nobody. The only ones who could do it is the black community. But again, our biggest sin is this organization.